Good evening, everybody. I'm, I guess I'm starting a few minutes early, but I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, whoever gets here will get here, and uh, we don't have a whole lot to go through today. This is our final week. Uh, this class goes by fast, doesn't it? Four week class, it really just zooms through. So, uh, you know, this is, a, this is your first taste of a full sale course, but they're all four weeks and they all happen faster than you can imagine. So, so what are we doing in our final week? Well, this is a week that is dedicated to feedback. Uh, the main assignment is that you're gonna take the presentation that you just finished and you're gonna make it better. You're not starting over, you're not really having to do anything substantial. You're just reflecting on what you've done, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and uh, see if there's any way to make it a little bit better. Uh, the version 2.0. And so uh, all of our uh, reading this week, which is just a single chapter, we have one final chapter in Resonate, and that chapter has to do with feedback. So it's on point for you, and that finishes up the book. And I hope that you take the wisdom of uh, Nancy Duarte with you. Uh, she really does want you to make great presentations she really does want you to use that knowledge, the ability to communicate, the ability to encapsulate information and spread ideas in a viral fashion and change the world. She just wants you to go out and really use your voice to change the world. You know, as artists, we have that ability. And um, oftentimes we, we just consider ourselves our client and sometimes we're happy with that. But uh, really, if you have a unique voice, if you have something that the world needs to hear, then you need to make that effort to go out and, and tell it to the world and sometimes persuade the world to listen. And uh, those are skills that you're gonna be able to take with you. They're skills that you're gonna be able to use throughout the, uh, uh, the other courses that you take here at Full Sail. So all of the things that Nancy Duarte has kind of fed you over and over again, you know, focus on your audience, you know, uh, visualize the words that you have to say, you know, tell stories. These are things that I want you to take with you. Um, so the assignment that we had you do was to talk about yourself and to essentially turn yourself into a product that you're selling. This is something that you're gonna to have to be dealing with your entire life. It's something that Full Sail is going to give you a lot of great tools and training for over the course of all of the, uh, the classes that you take. Uh, I'm introducing it here, but there's no question that we've, we've just got started on this topic of yourself as a brand. Uh, this is something that Full Sail is gonna talk a lot about. And it is essentially that you, as a creative artist, with something to offer the world, you have to be able to be able to present that package uh, as a product, to be able to sell it, to be able to um, message it to the world, sometimes without yourself around. And so um, uh, we wanna talk about personal branding in ways that can help us understand what that means. And you're gonna have more information on it in, in, in further classes. Uh, further down the road, you're gonna get information on how to make your resume and how to, how to uh, handle yourself in interviews and how to promote yourself and so forth. But the, the seed that I wanna plant this month is just that you and the talents that you have to offer the world are in essence a product that you own and control. And that controlling that message is the same notion in the way that a company promotes its own brand. And so we often look at professional companies and the way they treat their brands, what they do as a guide to how do we conduct ourselves uh, in our professional lives. Major corporations have entire departments that are devoted to promoting their brand, to protecting their brand, to uh, uh, writing guidelines about how the, the logos should be uh, presented and so on and so forth. Sometimes it gets a little bit obsessive. 
But in general, now that energy is well spent because the brand, not just the name, the title, the logo, but the story of who you are as a company is the important message that you want to put out to the world. And so when you start to think of yourself as a personal brand, it's the same sort of thing. You don't necessarily have to have a logo, but you need to have a personal story that you're putting out to the world. And we encapsulate this in something called the brand promise. When you see a certain company, when you see a logo, what does it say to you? What are you expecting out of that? And if you think about the great companies, they are making an explicit promise to you. Uh, Nike has, you know, uh, a brand and that brand says, go out and make your best effort. It is in constantly encouraging you to do your best to compete, to push. Doesn't say that you have to be better than other people. Doesn't say that uh, you have to punish yourself if you don't accomplish your goals. It just simply says you have to give it your effort. And that aspirational note is what the Nike swoosh is all about. Amazon, a great company, uh, promises ease of use. You know, we, we, we pretty much buy everything from Amazon nowadays. I don't know exactly what you can and can't, but it's almost easier to think about things you can't buy from Amazon than try to imagine what, you know, what they do carry nowadays. You know, uh, can you buy a Learjet or a bulldozer from them? I don't know. Maybe you can. I haven't even looked, but, uh, it isn't that they carry everything. It isn't that they're always the lowest price. It's that they're the easiest to use. Amazon is obsessively focused on making it easier for you to buy things. You know, that's why they gave out these, uh, uh, talking devices, Alexa, so that you can just order things off the spur of, of your, of the moment. Um, and they've created a number of ways to make it easier to buy early on. They spent a lot of time, in programming, easy ways to put in your credit card and not have to repeat it. In the early days of the net, net security usually said that nobody stored credit card information. So every time you wanted to purchase something, it was a 15 or 20 minute ordeal to put your credit card in and verify this and wait for this to be verified before you could even go to the next step and so forth. And Amazon is the one that created the programming that made it so that they could securely store your information and you didn't have to keep entering it over and over again. And they finally got it down to the one click purchase. And once it was easy to purchase off the website, they started focusing on the other issues of being obsessive about shipping and, uh, you know, promising you two day shipping and then one day shipping. And now you can even get stuff in certain areas within the same day. And uh, they've, they've spent all their money, physically building out warehouses near where you live so that instead of shipping everything from Seattle across the United States, somewhere, wherever you live, there's an Amazon warehouse near you and wherever you order the time to get it from the warehouse to your, to your door is shortened. And so all of that is about Amazon focusing on making it easier to purchase from them. And the Google promise is usually, uh, they, they promise um, uptime, that they promise that, that you can count on them being online. So if you're using their services, if you're storing your information with them, uh, I'm not sure that they're 100% online, but it is very rare. It makes the news whenever Google goes offline, e even for a few minutes or hours. So they, they have a, a, a reliability rate as a server in the 99.9 .9 range. And as a search tool, you know, they are unparalleled. Um, you know, people can argue with them. People can have questions about rankings and so forth, but nobody doesn't use Google to search. They've just become the default. And so those are the kinds of things that are, are a brand promise. And you yourself, as you market yourself as a, uh, a set of, skills to different industries that that uh, can be hired uh, can make a brand promise about yourself. And so let's think about what brand promises are for. They are a commitment of what you are going to give to your customers. 
And so in order to make a credible brand promise, you have to be transparent. You have to be saying, telling the truth about who you are. You have to be honest about what you can and can't do. So I know as a, 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 a new person in the working world, you go out for an interview and someone asks, can you do this program or that program? And oftentimes you're, you're, um, you're tempted to just say, yeah, I know this, like thinking that maybe you can go home and, and uh, uh, watch a few YouTube uh, uh, tutorials on Maya and therefore you're, you, you can run that 3D program. Well, for the most part, that's gonna bite you. Uh, say clearly what you can and cannot do. Uh, if your skills can't handle the job, you're eventually gonna get caught up anyway. So uh, it's best to be honest all the way and therefore you're never having to, uh, to catch up or um, uh, uh, hide any information. Be unique. Uh, you're going to school right now to learn a particular trade. And there are many facets of that trade, whether you're uh, going for audio production or 3D animation or, or uh, video game programming. Each one of those activities involves a dozen or more sub activities that break down. And what you're going to discover in your journey through school is that some of them you're okay at, some of them you're not quite that good at, and some of them you excel at. And the things that you excel at may not be the things that you're thinking about right now. You may be coming into Full Sail to be a 3D animator thinking that you want to model characters, but it turns out that your real skill is creating texture. That doesn't mean you'll never be a modeler, but it does mean that you should promote your texture capability, uh, at least above everything else, because that's your unique skill. As you market yourself as a brand, make, take note of what are the things you have, you can do that you can do better than other people. And that becomes real marketing um, potential. And you're not really going to discover what you're unique at until you actually go through all these processes, until you start learning all about programming or all about audio production, you're never going to find out what, you, you know, uh, one or two activities that you can do better than everyone else is. But once you do discover that, make sure that you've added it to your, the story of who you are so that you do have skills at which you rise above others at and you can promote that. And finally, uh, don't compromise. And when you get into the working world, it's very easy to say that you'll work for less than you want or that you'll do jobs that you don't think that you should be doing, but that's always gonna bite you. The hardest thing to do as you first get started is to say no, but it's also one of the most important things you're gonna do because you wanna protect your brand, you wanna protect your rate, you wanna protect who you are going forward for a long time. And compromising early on often can cripple your ability to uh, um, charge the money that you think you should be owed or uh, to get credit for the work that uh, you do do when you, when you work for others and have them uh, 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 accept the credit and so forth. So you have to be able to, to, to protect your brand. And sometimes that painfully means saying no. But um, a brand promise is a way of promoting who you are. So if you wanna turn yourself into a brand, if you wanna sell yourself to the working world, to the creative industry, then you have to figure out what you're good at and you have to make this promise in the promoting of your work and your talent. So a brand promise must be credible, it must come from a place of the heart of authenticity. It's kind of like hail. People know if you're lying in your voice, people will know if you really can do these things or not. And so you, you need to make brand promises that are truly a part of you. But make sure your brand is aligned with, you know, why you are in your chosen field, what you're all about. It must have value or benefit. So don't make a brand promise for things that people aren't interested in. Make sure that it is something that is promotable, that is valuable. And the most important thing about a brand promise is the extent to which you've kept it. The extent to which your promotion of that brand promise equals that you have lived up to that um, 
uh, offer. And that is the tail that will follow you around the world. And that if you break that promise, it's very hard to overcome it. If you keep that promise, word about you will travel without you're even uh, doing it yourself. You're going to find that the people that you work for, the people that you've, you've helped along the way, the people who've, who's uh, been your clients will sing your praises, but only if you keep your brand promises to them. So uh, this is something that's early in your career. You're all starting in month one here. This is not something to have fully figured out. This is something to just start thinking about. And in thinking about it over the next several months, you're going to come to a place where you, you will have the story that you want to tell about your skills and who you are. So the assignment that we've given you this month to talk about your brand, to sell yourself to your dream company, uh, we wanted you to do this as an act of visualization. It's creating a target for you to go to, to help you go through these long months of schooling. It doesn't mean that it needs to be accurate. I mean, a lot of times students suffer through creating their presentation because they think that it's a, a contract that's going to bind them. It's just an act of imagination of who you're going to become. It's a goal and you may, learn and grow down the way you may become you may get new skills you may have new interests you will change who that person that you want to be uh is and that's perfectly fine that's a natural path of growth but here as you begin your journey it is important to have a goal that you're aiming towards and the skills that you're looking about thinking about right now may not be the skills that you end up with um, it, it may be, you know, how many people when they're 10 years old say they want to be a fireman and then end up being a fireman? You know, we all have these paths in life and, uh, your journey through full sail is going to be one of those paths. It's going to be much more refined. It's going to be within your chosen field, but still within that, there is a lot of variation. There is a lot of different tasks that you can excel in or, uh, not want to be part of. So uh, having a notion of, of who you want to become is an important marker as you take this long journey and you're taking lots of different classes and, you're, and your class is going to vary, you know, um, in relevance to your degree one way or another. But as you go through them all, Having that end goal is going to be a very important way of keeping you focused on what's important to you and what you need to understand and keep. Um, so, like we said, this week is about feedback. I'm not really going to talk too long this week. We, we don't have a whole lot of uh, uh, new stuff that we're learning. We're, we're wrapping up this month. So, this month, this week is about giving and receiving feedback. Uh, you've all turned in your projects and um, uh, I want to apologize. I'm usually much further along. Uh, I mean, Ronald Bass wants to speak. Uh, let me see if I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, what's up, Teach? Um, so I did, I did uh, notice that I turned in my thing like six or seven minutes late. I'm curious how does is that take off a percentage of my score? Or do I just not get scored for that? Like, uh, uh, that is my choice, okay. and I'm choosing not to penalize anybody who turned in their project late. Okay, I was just curious. Thank you. Uh, uh, well, you will, you will find that it, it varies from class to class and teacher to teacher. Uh, okay. This is month one and I haven't wanted to penalize people. And, uh, you know, there have been a lot of people who've had issues, you know, uh, external, you know, as you're just getting started, you're going to find that the schedule uh, or that life, you know, comes at you kind of hard. And sometimes you have to work an extra shift or something happens to your family and whatnot. 
anybody who's told me about that has been given uh, forbearance. But uh, and, and we also realize that on the, um, uh, the day that we're asking you to upload the, the big project, that the mere size of that project can sometimes make people a little bit late. Like you start loading and it keeps loading and it goes past midnight. We certainly don't want to penalize anybody for that. So anybody who turns it in Monday night or today is uh, not going to get any uh, points off. Um, and uh, if you still haven't turned it in, please go ahead and turn it in. I'll accept that project. Uh, okay. Thank you. And it's usually my goal to try to get feedback to everybody today. I understand that this is a very important time that you want to keep going and that uh, you're, you're very curious as what I think about your project. Unfortunately, today I got called off uh, my regular duties. I was on a special project. Uh, we, uh, we have all kinds of fun things going on here at Full Sail. Uh, I'd love to tell you uh, what I did today, but I, I can't. But uh, it, was it was pretty cool, actually. But um, anyway, I was only able to get about a third of the grading done. So I want to apologize to anybody who's an anticipating getting their feedback today. Uh, I, I do promise that everyone who's turned this in will get their feedback tomorrow. And uh, there should be still plenty of time through the week to get anything changed and, and uh, made up for Sunday night. And anybody who needs time past Sunday uh, to turn in the final project, just let me know ahead of time and I'll, I'll, I'll make that available. But uh, uh, I did get mm, about a third of the, the projects uh, graded. So I have seen them and what I've seen looks pretty good. Everybody is uh, uh, pretty much on point. Uh, there's not a whole lot of um, things that needed to be corrected and so forth. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with what I've seen so far and that's probably gonna be representative of most of the whole. But I do wanna get everybody feedback. And the, and the issue is you all have to change your project somewhat. Uh, I'm gonna get into in, 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 in detail in a moment, but this being a week of feedback, you're all gonna receive feedback from my, me. You're all gonna have another exercise in which you give feedback. And I'm hoping that you give and receive feedback to each other using the uh, discussion board. I've seen a good deal of that already, so I'm very, very pleased. I hope more of you participate. Any of you who have not, please go ahead and put your project up in 3.3. The 3.3 discussion board continues through this week, and that's where we're asking you to get uh, feedback from your fellow students. If you post your project up asking for feedback, then I would ask that you go and choose at least one other student and give them feedback as well. And we want to give each other quality feedback, meaning uh, feedback that's, that works. And so uh, that's why I want to go through right now the rules for giving and receiving feedback. You're going to receive feedback from me. You're going to give feedback to other students. Um, and there are actual uh, uh, steps here involved. So I want to talk about that right now. Uh, the first rule in giving feedback is create safety. And by that, what we mean is you engage in this notion of giving and receiving feedback in an area in which there is trust involved. I, I don't recommend anybody post their project on Facebook or Reddit and ask for comments because there's going to be some troll who's gonna come along and be mean because he can be mean and anonymous. Uh, no one there has your best interests at heart. So you look for feedback in an area in which you have trust among the people involved, that the people involved have your best interests at heart, that you know that you can trust them uh, to get honest opinions and so forth. Now, this doesn't mean that it's a mutual aspiration society and everybody's always just complimenting each other. It just means that you know that someone isn't going to be engaged in uh, uh, saying mean comments for no reason or trolling or, uh, being vindictive or anything like this. So you need to have uh, this going on in a place where you can feel uh, uh, safe. And our discussion board is that kind of place. All the other students have your best interests in heart. We're all rooting for each other. We are all governed by the um, GPS code of professionalism. And so you can expect that no one is going to take any cheap shots at you. 
Uh, when you get into the working world, the place where you work is going to be the same kind of zone of safety that most likely everyone has each other's best interests at heart and you can ask for feedback from your colleagues. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're getting feedback from the, uh, the right people, the right group. Next rule of giving feedback is be positive. Now, be positive doesn't mean say only nice things. It means talk about things that can be changed. Do not limit stuff that's part of the assignment that is already you know, baked in or that uh, it's too late or, or, or uh, too irrelevant to change it. Talk about things that can be changed or fixed. In someone asking for feedback, they're asking, I have so much time, I've already finished this project, what can I do to make it better? They're not gonna start over, they're not gonna completely go in another direction unless they have to. And so uh, you're just talking about what are the tweaks that can be made. And along with be positive is be specific. You have to tell people in, uh, your, your feedback in such a way that they can actually make that happen. For instance, it's bad feedback to tell someone, I don't like your fonts. Not because you don't like their fonts, but because there's nothing anybody can do with that information. We know what you don't like, but you haven't told me what to do. So a better way of saying that is, I think the text in your slides is too thin. You need to use a thicker font because when people look at it from far away, it's gonna be easier to read. You could use a font like Universe Bold. So there you're being specific. You're telling them exactly what they could or couldn't do to change or make that change. And the person who's receiving that information then has the ability to in their head know, yeah, I could do that or I don't wanna do that. But if you give them broad information without a way to make that change, the feedback is not really helpful. Uh, it doesn't give them a, an avenue of, of, of making corrections or fixes. Be immediate. Okay, we're all on a deadline here. We all have to turn our project in on Sunday. So those of you that are putting things in the discussion board, if you're putting it in today or tomorrow, you wanna to be giving feedback to other people by Wednesday or Thursday. So that by Friday, people can be gathering those comments and making changes. You, you don't wanna give someone really, really great advice at 9.30 on a Sunday night. Uh, that's worse than good because it's a great idea that it's too late to do anything about. So you want to give someone um, quick turnaround feedback. If someone asks you for advice and you can't give it then and there, ask about their, their time frames because it's not gonna be any secret to know that all of us in all of the fields that we're gonna go into for the rest of our lives are gonna be on deadline. That's just the nature of creative work that whatever project you're on is on deadline. And if you're aware of that, then you're aware that when someone asks for feedback, there's only so much time that they have that they can accept that. And there's nothing worse than see, receiving great advice after it's too late to, to do anything with it. So make sure you're, you're aware of people's timelines. And finally, provide tough love. So we all wanna be friends to each other, but if someone is completely wrong, if they completely misunderstood the instructions or gone in a direction that's you know going to make them start over anyway you're not doing them any favors by not letting them know the better that they come from a friend like you than from someone else so if someone is is way off base you can find a way to let them know that they have some major changes to make without making it hurt as much as it might from someone else so provide tough love. If people need to know that they're headed in the wrong direction, the sooner they get turned in the right direction, the better off they are. So if you're a friend, you're going to step up and have that difficult conversation. And you're gonna find a way to make it not be so, you know, uh, stinging or mean. But tough love is necessary. Sometimes people just completely misunderstand. And the sooner they, they, they see the right way, the better off they are. So how do you receive feedback? Well, uh, in the opposite of uh, uh, provide a safe uh, environment, cultivate a growth mindset. What this means is that if someone is nice enough 
is kind enough to give you feedback, then it's your obligation to hear them out completely. Oftentimes people say they want feedback when what they really are wanting are fish for compliments. And oftentimes I've sat through this and uh, I'm, I'm sure a whole lot of you are gonna be guilty of it uh, when, when you post again uh, your final project. That before you even let anyone see your project, you go through a litany of things that you think are wrong with it. This happens all the time in critiques. People are defensive. They say, well, I know it's not long enough and I know I didn't have it, you know, the right kind of mic and blah, blah, blah. And you should never say any of that. Um, if you're really wanting feedback from people, you should not preconceive uh, any notions ahead of time. You should just let people see and react to the work. Oftentimes, things that you think are glaring mistakes, someone might not even comment at all, on at all. But what you, you don't want to be dis defensive and, the, and the, the really big sin is if someone starts to give you feedback, don't jump in and correct them. If someone says, well, your audio was a little low there, don't jump in and say, yeah, that wasn't my fault. The microphone messed up. I should get a better microphone, blah, blah, blah. All of that may be true. But the fact that you cut someone off in the middle of giving you feedback told that person something, someone else, something else, that you don't value their opinion and they will never give you feedback again. So if someone is giving you feedback and, they, and there's a reason for what they're talking about and you're dying to speak, hold your tongue, let that person get their full thought out. As soon as they're done, there's an opportunity for you to, to say what the reason was or to reset the, 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 uh, the framework or whatever. But if you cut someone off, you're being rude. They're being nice enough to give you feedback. You need to hear them out completely. So growth mindset says, I'm respecting everyone who's talking to me. I'm not going to cut them off. I'm not going to, you know, uh, deflect and be defensive about every remark that's made. Uh, and oftentimes, if someone points out something that, that you're already aware of, then take credit for your mistakes. That's a kind of a bonding moment. It means that we're thinking about the project in the same way. So uh, if you respond to people in, uh, after they've given you their thoughts uh, that you agree with them, then it becomes an easier uh, way to talk about your work. Focus on self-improvement. Oftentimes you're gonna find that when you ask people for feedback, they're gonna give you feedback on all kinds of things, some of which is not necessarily relevant to you. Uh, I know that when I was in the, the, the working world and doing a lot of freelance, whenever I would present projects to, to clients, uh, the one thing I feared was if I mentioned like uh, somebody had a dog and I picked a kind of dog because I knew that that meeting was gonna get derailed over Oh, you picked a German Shepherd? Let's make it a Collie. And, you know, it probably wasn't even part of the project. It was just sort of a flavor in the background. But sometimes people get caught off on tangents. And, uh, you know, that was one that would always particularly bothered me. But you just let people go on about that stuff. If they're giving you feedback, you pick and choose among what they tell you about how to improve this. If they mention irrelevant stuff, then that's fine. That's just things that they're interested in. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to make those changes. One of the things about feedback is that it's up to you as the artist to evaluate the feedback. So even when you receive feedback from me as your teacher, my feedback is suggestions. It's not commands. So you can choose to say, oh, well, I, I considered what he said, but he's wrong. I'm going to keep it like it is. That's your choice. That's your obligation as an artist. Now, I'm giving you feedback because I'm sincerely thinking that you should make this change. So I would expect you to make the change, but I'm not going to be uh, offended that you don't. I know that this is your project and you're making the final judgment. And so you all have to know that as well. Uh, finally, learn from criticism. Sometimes people are just going to have different thoughts. You know, you might like this in blue and someone else likes it in brown. There's no way to, to reconcile that. Just realize that, you know, uh, people are different. Uh, 
and maybe start to build a database. If, if it turns out that there are only three people who like it in blue and 90 people like it in brown, then, you know, that tells you something about demographics. And, uh, you know, you might want to factor that into your choices next time. You know, maybe you don't pick your own favorite, but you pick the group's favorite or the, or, uh, you know, the demographic favorite. Uh, but criticism uh, is always useful information, even if it isn't something that you are necessarily going to implement at that point. And find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. We all want to make each other better. And so uh, this is not an area where we're competing. This is an area where we're helping each other to get better. And feedback is something where we can celebrate each other's success and we can kind of, you know, look at what other, other people are doing and be mindful of it and maybe steal some of that great, those great ideas for ourselves for next time. So uh, that's how to receive feedback. We actually have a project 4.3 in which you're, we're going to have you all have in, uh, practice giving feedback. We used to make it uh, part of the assignment that, that students would cre critique each other's projects. But what turned out is sometimes students wouldn't participate and then there would be a student who didn't get feedback. And so that was unfair for one student's grade to be dependent upon another one participating. So uh, we've made this act of, of uh, providing feedback in the discussion board voluntary. We highly recommend it, but if someone doesn't give you feedback, you know, that's just the way it is. I can't, I can't make it happen. But we all do want, we do want all of you to have practice giving feedback. So we created an assignment 4.3. It's a little bit like our week one TED talk assignment. Basically, we have three student projects here and uh, they're all pretty good. They're not perfect. They are first drafts. And so we want you to watch all three. They're, you know, they're linked in to the discussion or they're linked into the assignment. Uh, watch all three, choose one. You only have to choose one. You don't have to do all three. But when you, when you do that, then we want you to answer a few questions. This is a text assignment. You're going to write your answers down. What specifically did you like about the presentation? Explain. Which part of the presentation was the most difficult to follow? Explain and offer suggestions. So if it's confusing, uh, offer some feedback on how to make it uh, a little clearer. Based on what you've learned this month and create a presentation, what advice do you have for the presenter for the final presentation? So you might talk about how they use hail in their voice or what kind of visual examples they used or how they structured their story, but give, give uh, advice, feedback on how to make that presentation better. What techniques, skills, qualities from the course materials did this presentation exemplify? So I want you to just think about the things that you learned, the projects you worked on, and just uh, identify how you feel like the student was doing their project. Uh, it's all related on your own personal experience. This is written in, uh, yeah, an essay form. Basically, one or two paragraphs is all I'm looking for. And finally, a, a little trick question here from last week. Which of the three pillars of this presentation does, uh, does this presentation appeal to? Ethos, pathos, logos. Explain. So as you're listening to this, you're hearing this, the uh, student talk to their dream employer. What is that relationship? Is it an uh, appeal to ethos? Appeal to pathos, appeal to logos. Just, you know, tell us very quickly. Uh, and uh, we want you to create a document and just, uh, you know, a Word document. You can even write in the uh, feedback box here if you want. Uh, I will accept anything you want. A text document is the easiest thing to do. Just write it in Word, two or three paragraphs. Uh, and in the final paragraph, after you've talked about the one project that you have given feedback on, reflect upon your own thoughts on feedback and how feedback in, and, and critique might inform, uh, change your own work. So give us your ideas about what feedback will do for you and your work process. So uh, that's what I'm looking for, just two or three paragraphs, two paragraphs on, the, on the, uh, the video that you choose and one paragraph where you reflect on feedback 
turn that in. Again, it can be a Word doc, it can be a PDF, it can be a Google doc, it can be any text file you want. It can be something that you write in the feedback box. I will accept just, you know, two or three paragraphs written here. Uh, uh, that's sometimes problematic because if the uh, browser refreshes itself, you know, if you're working on a long piece, it sometimes loses a little bit, but uh, you, can, uh, you, you can type here or you can type in any Word document. Uh, so it isn't like a formal beginning, middle, and end. No, no, this is just, um, it's a review. Like you're, uh, you, you reviewed one TED Talk. Just answer these questions. You know, if you wanna just put it in as Q&A, you can. I don't really like that. But you could, you, could, you could literally type these questions in and then answer them. I prefer that you synthesize your answers to this into a paragraph form. And that's why I'm calling it an essay. But if you just want to call it, you know, questions and answers, that's what we're looking for. Answer these questions in the two paragraphs about the presentation. But coming up with your idea for how to make this better is the most important thing. I want to know that you can come up with feedback. I want to know that you have original ideas to help someone else make their project better. So, uh, the, beyond the questions the most important thing is the kind of feedback that you can give that student so i don't know if i'm helping or hurting i'm, I'm reading in the chat box here uh it isn't a formal beginning and middle and end it, it's just an essay it it pretty much is answering the questions but i want to make sure you go on go beyond and make sure that you're giving your own advice for how to make that project better So uh, is that clear or did I make it more confusing? You know, I, if, if, you don't, if you don't get every one of these questions answered, but you give feedback advice to the student, that's the most important thing to me. I'm using the term essay and I'm thinking a standard five question paragraph. Make it five question paragraph then. I'm okay with that. Um, I prefer that you take questions like this and you synthesize them into a paragraph because that makes you more of a storyteller. That makes you more of an artist. But this assignment isn't that hard. So if you wanna just make it answering five questions, you can. That's fine. So either way is fine. Essay form, answering paragraph, answering questions is fine. So that's this assignment. It shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes or so after you watch all three videos. And remember, you're only picking one of the three. So you only have to you know, watch the videos till you find the one you wanna pick. And then finally, 4.4 is turning in your final uh, project. And uh, there's not a whole lot to be told about here. You cannot turn in exactly the same project. If you think you did everything right, you still have to change the project to some degree. You have to add a few more words to the voiceover. You have to add another slide. You have to change some words in the slide. There is no minimum or maximum amount of change. If you feel like you're, you're way off, uh, then maybe you do have to do a lot of work for the final. If you didn't nail it on the first draft, then maybe you have more work to do than on other people for the final draft. But if your final draft, if your first draft was really on target and it was fantastic, then you don't have to do a whole lot. But you do have to improve it. You have to look at it, reflect about it, and say, how can I make this better? And so turn into me a version that is better. The other thing that is about the final version is that it has to be finalized or in final form. And what I mean by that is that it is auto running. I've received an awful lot of PowerPoint projects in which I have to click to advance slides or I have to click to engage audio. I don't want any of that in the final. You have the ability within PowerPoint to create 
a project which once I open it up and, and hit run, it plays all the way to the end by itself. And that's what has to happen. Now I prefer that you even export it out as a movie. It's not required. So if you create a PowerPoint project, you can turn it in as a PowerPoint project, but you have to make sure that your audio is automatically playing, no clicking to engaging, and that your slides move from slide to slide by themselves, that uh, the, the viewer does not have to engage after turning the project on. That's what we mean by it's finished. So even if you're working in PowerPoint, you can export to video. If you're working in uh, Adobe Spark, they give you an MPEG-4 file anyway. Uh, one of the things I highly recommend for the final version is that you upload it to YouTube. Now again, it's not necessary, it's not required, but pretty much all of you have Google accounts, which means that you have YouTube accounts as well. And Google has unlimited server space. So it's a great place to store your final project. Even if you don't want other people to see it, you can set things on, you can put things on YouTube and set them to private so that the rest of the world isn't seeing it. But you have it there and Google is gonna hang on to it in case your phone is lost or your laptop dies or whatnot, your work is preserved on Google servers for free. That's a really terrific thing. And another great aspect of it is that if you wanna share your work, if you created this giant movie, some of you have had problems uploading because your movie was you know, 500 megabytes. It's a huge file if, it, if you make a, a, a rich video. And so if you wanna share that, you don't wanna to have to be sending 500 megabytes to this person and that person. If you store it once on YouTube, then you can just send people the URL very quickly. And it's a great way to share your work. It's a great way to preserve your work. As you're going through the different classes, I would recommend you know, whatever the final version of whatever you're working on, you, you upload to YouTube so that you didn't have a record of what you're doing and you can share it with others at your choice. Uh, you know, and so, uh, learn how YouTube works, learn how the, uh, uh, you, you can make things public or private and how you can share things and you have all kinds of advantages to that. Um, Braden says, do not set it to private. Otherwise the teacher will not be able to see it. Uh, set it to unlisted. So yeah, uh, there is private, there is unlisted, there is public. So uh, learn to become a, a, learn that much about YouTube and, and, and you have all the uh, options that you need. But uh, again, I just recommend it because it's a great way to archive your work and have options as you move forward. Uh, and as you get started here, this is your first class. You're just gonna keep going and uh, uh, it's nice to have uh, good work practices in place that you can follow all the way through. Uh, the last thing here is called portfolio competency self-reflection. It's basically uh, you're writing your own ideas about what did you feel like this class was meant to do and how did you do? So you're sort of uh, uh, just telling us feedback on how to make the class better. Uh, this is not for a grade. Uh, we do ask you to fill it out, but it, it, it doesn't um, uh, affect your grade one way or the other if you, if you do it. Uh, you can do it in, in, in text or you can do it as a video. So if you want to do it really simply, um, you can just turn on the camera and talk and just turn in the video file. Uh, all we're looking for is, is your thoughts and uh, we review them to help us make the class better. Uh, so that helps us to make the class better for the next students. So all of this stuff is due on Sunday night, uh, technically at midnight. And uh, when that class, when that's over after midnight, one minute after midnight, your next class is gonna open up. So in the same place that you, you first access this class, the upper left-hand corner of Full Sail 1, you're gonna have a listing for your very next class. For most of you, it's gonna be called PYP, the Psychology of Play. And it's a pretty cool class. It deals with uh, psychological structures. It deals with uh, work, gameplay, balan uh, um, um, balancing your schedule and, and managing your time. Uh, it has to do with psychological processes. So uh, I think a lot of students really enjoy it. It's a very different kind of class from this. 
But uh, that's going to start up just uh, one minute after this class ends. This class is going to be accessible to you for the next two weeks after the class closes. So you can come back and see your grade. Uh, if you're turning something in late, you can come back and deal with that. Uh, but once all the grades are finalized and they're fully entered, uh, this class will close down. You won't be able to access classes all the way through. Basically, uh, every month you just have the, the current class and maybe uh, a few weeks of the class before that's available to you. And that's the way it goes. It just moves on and on. But as soon as this class ends, the next class begins. So one of the things we try to do is to make the workload in the final week not quite as heavy. So those of you who are doing this are going to find that you probably can get your, your uh, project finalized and turned in uh, a little early. And if you can, that kind of gives you a weekend. It'd be nice to have a free weekend. So if you can get this done by Thursday or Friday and turn it in, then uh, you, can, you can have a weekend off before your next class starts up. And uh, this particular weekend will be fun to have off because it's Halloween. So, you know, why not, go, why not shoot for that? Uh, but those of you that do need extra time, let me know. I can extend the deadline. I can give you more time all up until the time that the grades are pulled, uh, which is, uh, you know, a week or so later. Um, but again, everyone should have feedback for me by tomorrow night. And that should be plenty of time for you to get uh, any changes made and be able to turn this in. And uh, once the, the next class goes on, you guys will move on and you'll just have class after class until you get to the end. Do I have any questions? Uh, I had some good questions already. Uh, you're all probably going to be in different classes with different folks. So, you know, uh, networking is important. Make sure you've gotten the emails and connects with the folks that are here so that you can stay in touch with them. Uh, and then there's plenty of ways that you can continue to talk to them. There are lots of um, uh, Discord groups. There are discussion, discussion boards on Full Sail One uh, and everything. So, uh, and then lots of, lots of people are uh, using uh, social media tools as well. So make sure you're, uh, you're, you're networking with the folks that are going to be your friends and colleagues down the road before you, uh, before you miss the opportunity. And so uh, I want everybody to have a great week. Anybody who's having trouble integrating their audio with their deck, slide deck, let me know. Uh, those of you that turn them in as uh, separate items. I tend to integrate them for you and give you back uh, that file, but uh, um, the whole point is you should be able to make a change your audio uh, and, and uh, redo the sync it very easily. You should be able to add and, and move around the slides and rechange the sync very easily. So that process uh, should be something that you become familiar with if you're using PowerPoint. Uh, if you're using other tools, you know, um, it's usually pretty clear cut how to deal with that. I think a lot of people are using Adobe Spark and I've seen some really good um, uses of that. So uh, I want you guys to just find tools that you can work with and, uh, you know, be happy with. So uh, you guys have a great week and you guys have a great career here at Full Sail. This has been a really uh, exciting class to me. I think you guys are all going to go far and you're going to do well. And, uh, you know, this is uh, what the Chinese call exciting times. Uh, you know, we're about to have an election and that's going to change the world uh, quite a lot. And the, uh, uh, the, the medical issue that's going on with the, with the, the pandemic is, is changing the way people get together. And, you know, you guys are entering school at, at a time when the world is one way and you may exit school and, and the world will be completely different. And all of that will be unfolding before your eyes. So uh, don't forget to pay attention to the wider world as you pay attention to your classes because I think you are entering school at a time of great change. And that's actually very exciting. I mean, uh, it's, it's very frightening for a lot of people. Change is always frightening, but it also means that the world is turning to accept the new and you guys are the new. So 
whatever world's being created, it's your world. And uh, you should be excited to be a part of it. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great week. Have a great time here at Full Sail. I've really appreciated it.